Hello. Today is October 22nd, 2019, and it's about 2.12 p.m. local time here in Pasadena. You're receiving this message because you're one of the 945 stakeholders in all sports market. Some of you have been here all the way back to the Costa Rica days uh, back in 2003, 2004, and some of you are much more recent than that. I want to go through uh, a number of things here so that you really understand where we are at this moment. Um, I know quite a few of you don't bother to listen to the updates and uh, quite a few of us also don't even read the, uh, the emails that I send out with the conference calls and so forth. So hopefully this video will get your attention. Just give me a few minutes here. It's worth the time. I know um, there are many out there that have written this off, don't think it's going to work, don't even bother paying attention, but that's really uh, unfair to the rest of us and to the people who have been working on this so diligently for such a long time. Um, yes, there have been plenty of challenges. There's no question about that. But the progress that has been made is very real. Um, I'll start with the most concerning thing and what's on everybody's mind, which is the SEC case. I want to restate again, uh, and I even had communication this morning with the SEC uh, counsel on the other side of this matter that it is a civil matter. It is not a criminal matter. Um, that's very important to understand, and it's all based upon uh, the share grant programs, which, as I've stated over and again, if I would have found or if it would have been brought to me that this was black letter illegal in any fashion, uh, it would have never been done. But the, the truth is that the fact pattern and what we did simply doesn't exist in the code. It doesn't exist in the case law. And in order to say that this is an unregistered stock sale, they have to make that case. And apparently that's what they want to do. Um, we tried to settle it before it got to this point by basically saying, OK, we think it's uh, a loophole. Uh, you want to close. I can understand that because if someone can create a nonprofit and simply bypass the entire uh, Securities and Exchange Act, then uh, I, get, I get the problem there. But that wasn't what we were doing. That was not what we were trying to do. The dates don't match. The, the nonprofit was formed in 2011. The reconstituted uh, Crystal World Holdings was formed in 2014. So, I mean, there was no design here to um, do this. It just became uh, a benefit that we added into the group of benefits as we moved along the timeline in order to keep the enterprise funded. And that's, that's the truth of it. Um, there was no intention to... to subvert the laws. And in fact, we tried very diligently to uh, raise funds through WeFunder and Crowd, um, WeFunder and Start Engine, and were stopped on those without ever being told what the reason was behind it. In fact, we had to charge back a five thousand, I had to charge back $5,000 uh, on my personal credit card because the due diligence people wouldn't even tell us why and they wouldn't give us the money back voluntarily. So um, there's never been any attempt to skate the law, and I would point to, even going back to Costa Rica, that I was the one that advocated for legality in the first place. Um, pretty big fights went around the team over this. So to say that I would get to this point, get to California, and then suddenly flout the laws is just ridiculous. Um, it's not the case. So where does it stand, and what does the what, what are the potential outcomes? I think that's that's probably what's on most everyone's mind. So I see a, a worst case scenario that um, I can't separate the liability from Crystal World Holdings. Again, I, I'm going to restate this another uh, one more time, that I will pull that liability onto me personally if I can by dismissing the cases against the entities and deal with it on my own if that can be done if that's the only outcome. In other words, if there's just simply no way to win, um, that's what I would, would do. So um, what if I can't do that? What if it just, what if they get what they want? Okay, so assume that I, there's no progress that can be made. No, nothing can happen to, to mitigate this and we just have to take the loss. What does that mean? Well, it would mean a one and a half million dollar judgment against the company. Now, it sounds horrible, but the reality is it's a very small number if you look at what we're playing for. Um, you know, what is the potential upside of this is, is massively 
greater than one and a half million dollars. And I would offer that on any given month, DraftKings, FanDuel, and all these sportsbook operators are paying these kinds of fees and legal fees to try to defeat the laws. So I see a worst case scenario that that, uh, that becomes, the, becomes a liability basically. Now, there's two parts to that. Uh, and I'm painting the word. I, this is not what I think will happen, but I think, to be honest, this is an on, this is an honest treatment of of the worst case scenario. So, assume that they get their judgment. Um, the operating entity is not the is not Crystal World Holdings. The the operating entity is the nonprofit. So, it becomes a judgment, and that's a collection issue. That's completely separate from from the actual um, judgment itself. So. That's a whole nother process of determining what, if, and how uh, those monies would be paid. It's a completely separate matter. Uh, so that's as bad as it gets. Um, I don't see any other worse outcome than that. Um, personally, I don't think that's the way it's going to go. Um, as we get deeper into this and look at it and talk to attorneys about it, um, there's a lot of reason to believe that it's not going to turn out this way for a number of reasons. And especially on the judgment side, in the view of this most recent uh, ICO settlement for less than a tiny fraction, less than 1%, a tiny fraction of less than 1% of the total ICO raise that was put out there. Um, and we put that into the pleadings because it's totally unjust to turn around and say, well, we would be, we, you know, if we're wrong here and we can't defeat the claims that we're responsible for 100% of the uh, the amount when you just settled for a, a fraction of a percent with IC, with an ICO, uh, large ICO, and they're continuing to fundraise um, to this moment. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's no equity there in that kind of an outcome. So um, where we are now is in the developing the uh, answer and, and counterclaims that will probably take the form of affirmative defenses. We're still working on that. Uh, in the meantime, we carry on. Um, you will see in this message that there is a, a link to the conference call that's good, that's tonight. It's coming tonight. Uh, I'm actually recording this video ahead of time. Please take the time to listen to that because there will be uh, even more up-to-date information. But the uh, educational uh, side of things, the sports core curriculum is, is moving ahead. Um, the development is moving ahead. You'll see that update as well. And the biggest news that I have is that we are... Um, we're moving ahead with a fundraise for a, for a, a league, a sports league. I, I wish I could tell you the, the name of it, but I can't um, because there are parties that wish to mess this up for us for whatever reason. Um, not sure if it's, it doesn't matter. We can't disclose the name. Um, we can't disclose the name on their request as well. But the timeline for the announcement is very short. Um, it's going to be in early December when we get the maximum press impact from from Zach and also Bernie has a very uh, large New York City footprint. So the combination of Zach, Bernie, and I'll be there in New York for the Hero Club panel that's been in prior emails. Um, that's when we make the deal announcement. Basically the partnership announcement is going to take place there and then um, we will work through the legal side and all that and then there'll be a second announcement with the actual terms and the raise date and all of this stuff what i did find out that i can share is that this is more about uh creating the market perception that this league is very forward looking and progressive and innovative and less about how much money is actually raised so uh using that as our starting point it really changes the dynamics of things. So they want to be seen as a innovative new league. They see us as an innovative new platform, and they are in full in full view of the SEC matter. This is very important to note. This is we don't hide this from anyone. We can't. Um, that would be uh, propagating misleading information. So they know about it. Um, they also know that in big business. I'm not saying that we're a big business at this point, but when you're out there in front of everybody, this kind of thing happens. Um, you know, it does. It's just the simple reality of it. It, it does. Uh, just do some research on any company that you 
are fond of or use daily, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, they asked what we were doing about it, and I explained what we're doing, and you know, the, it's not, the matter is being dealt with. So uh, that's not a hindrance to them proceeding. So the timeline is short. It's uh, between, you know, our, we're going to be using the next um, roughly 45 days, whatever that timeline is, between now and the first week of December to stage everything so that we can make the announcement. Uh, in December when we get the maximum amount of PR impact uh, because of Zach. And then Bernie's footprint is is just always high because of his playing time in, in the New York City area. And then I'll be there for the 30-minute panel, which will be discussing um, all aspects of ASM, the development, where we are, our challenges and struggles, including the SEC case. Um, I am starting to get the guest list back. Um, speaker list back. People are going to show up there. Um, again, it's a, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty amazing group of people that are going to be speaking and attending. So um, this time it'll be 30 minutes, not five minutes. It was five minutes last year. Uh, so that's a big opportunity for us. It's all paid up. Um, I'm not asking you for any any financing for that. Actually, I I paid for the travel on my uh, personal credit and. Uh, we're 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 not paying anything to C-Suite and, and Hero Club. We're suspended right now, but uh, it hasn't had any impact on our ability to participate in anything. And they know that we're going through a transition period here, and and you know some difficulties. But please keep in mind that this project has been live for almost 20 years. It's it's been operational if you start counting back in 2004 for 15 years, uh, well five years, and then five year. Uh, hiatus, if you want to call it that, because of the crash, and then five five years uh, since we restarted it. There's a very dedicated team. The, the, the team that is working on this now is the same team that was there when the crash happened. Um, you know, we're back to that core team, but that core team is what held it all together. So uh, everybody's working on this day by day by day. Uh, it is progressing, um, and this news of the the league uh, wanting to go ahead and proceed with the partnership with us and to announce the the partnership in uh, in early December is huge and um, it's a it's a really amazing thing to see happen especially in view of all the bumps we've had in the last few months but that is the reality of it so um, we've cut the expenses down I've got them up down about sixty five about sixty five percent from where they were. Still looking for little bits here and there. I, I don't see any more room for anything. It's really cut down to the bare. So um, we do still need to stay financed. If you remember, I asked months ago, I, mean, I think it was even the earlier first quarter of this year, to give me until the end of the year. Um, and the end of the year is not here yet before you um, you know, want to make a change or whatever. I, I said if, if we get to the end of the year and everybody's still unhappy, that I call a shareholder meeting and that we would uh, address whatever you guys want to do, however you want to proceed, I, that I wouldn't be, stand in the way of whatever that decision is. And I'm standing by that statement. In the meantime, please um, do participate in the in the sports shares programs that I put out. I do keep a running countdown of the needs uh, week by week in the ASM notice board. You can see that there. Um, that money has to be raised or, or we lose things. Uh, it's, not, it's not optional. So, um, you know, Please don't give up before the end of the year. I, I just asked to, to see this all the way through to the end of the year. And if uh, if everybody's still unhappy with it, then we'll do what we have to do. In the body of this email, you can see your uh, shareholdings and a few other miscellaneous pieces of data, um, you know, in terms of, well, like I said, the conference call and a few other statistics and your shareholdings. So it is, it is my honest 100% intention uh, with all my heart and soul to, to see this through for everybody and to make that stake that you see in the body of this email valuable. So uh, I'm here doing absolutely everything I can using every bit of cash and credit and time and waking hours to to do what I said I would do. And I only ask that you please uh, consider, you know, <laughs> stepping up and helping us fund this much reduced budget to get to the end of the year, get this announcement out there, because I, I sincerely believe that once we get this announcement out there, that the, that this is the follow-on story that we need to uh, really wake the marketplace up 
and to build the order book and to finally uh, show the world what we have here in terms of, of being able to raise capital for sports leagues in a brand new way. We just need one deal announcement and then, a, of course, we need that to succeed. But now that I know that it's not really about the capital as much as it is the fan engagement and, and being seen as an innovative new platform that that lowers the bar in terms of making the round a success. Um, we'll look at that in terms of, you know, how to get that message out and make sure that the round is a success. And then that story will carry. And then once that story starts to carry, instead of chasing the media around or trying to get people's attention, that the whole thing will change. It will turn around and people will want to know what this is. What is this? What is all this about? I do see that um, as the outcome. And that's what we're shooting for. So um, deal announcement, first week of December. And also we're looking to make a public announcement regarding the educational program because that's the two, two halves of the coin um, or the two sides of the coin is the order book, which we need a deal <laughs> to get it going. And then we need to show something publicly on the educational side. So um, I know the economy is slowing down. I know that people are a little bit nervous, but, you know, $25 here and there, um, there's 945 of you. Uh, it's, it, it, it doesn't take a whole lot for us to, to close the gaps now, especially now that the, uh, the budget has been reduced so substantially. Basically, um, the only thing that's being paid now are core expenses. There are no, um, there is nothing on the payroll other than my costs, which a lot of that is, I mean, I literally live in my office. Um, I, it's about 3000. It's actually less than that. I looked at it, looked at the last couple of months. Um, I don't take a fixed amount. I only take whatever's needed. Um, but it doesn't even run that much. Um, and it typically runs about 2000 to 2500 dollars And that's even going to change here in a, in a few months because I won't be paying child support anymore. So um, it's, it's going to be le even less. And the rent here um, for the office, which, which is $1,250 a month. So between that and all of the other costs for uh, data and external services and supplies and things and that that's that's all there is that's what's left of the budget and then maintaining uh valid payouts to our client accounts and the whole thing runs between about uh 10 to twelve thousand dollars a month i'm going to shoot for ten thousand but it, it's been running about twelve thousand for the last few months i'm going to see if i can get it under ten thousand a month so um if you want the state to be valuable <laughs> Uh, that's in the body of this email message. The key to all that is that we have to have the market working. Um, the market needs to be working and then people will want to know because this has happened before. When the market is working, people will come to us and want to buy the stock. And then we, you know, that's when we talk about how we allow our insiders to sell and all that. But we can't put the cart before the horse. We have to get the market to work and then the stock becomes marketable. And again, even in a worst case situation with the uh, SEC, if they if they slap us with a million and a half dollar judgment against the grand scheme of things, um, that's one month's worth of legal bills for the gambling industry. I guarantee you, if not if not uh, more than a million and a half dollars, in in trying to navigate around through under get around the Wire Act and all the rest of that. So it's really very small, um, and we're gonna of course we're gonna fight that as as hard as we can and try to bring it down to nothing or as close to nothing or maybe even get the cases dismissed. So. Um, Please uh, be encouraged. Um, we, we have this, this deal announcement actually is kind of a surprise even to me. It happened in the last uh, couple of days. So uh, it's really, really positive news, and I'm not making up a word of it. So uh, thank you for your time, and I'll speak with you again soon. Bye now.